So the New England Patriots finished free agency, at least the main run of free agency, finishing with one of the best free agent classes out of every single team in the entire National Football League. And look, before you guys go off on me in the comments, I'm not saying this is my own personal opinion about the Patriots free agency, which we will get into my thoughts later, but rather what PFF is saying. Welcome on in, everybody. You guys already know who it is. It's your boy, Patriots Global, back here with another video. And today, we're going to be touching upon the Patriots free agency class a little bit because I think every single Patriots fan would probably give this a D or an F. I've seen a lot of Patriots fans, at best, give this like a C, C- minus free agency class by New England. They had the most cap space out of every single team with just over $100 million. You know, you had Elliot Wolf saying that they wanted to weaponize the offense this offseason. You had Gerard Mayo saying that they were going to burn some cash this offseason. And Patriots fans didn't exactly get the signings that I think that they were expecting. But as PFF always does, they graded every single team's individual free agency class. And let's look at what they gave the Patriots. So straight off the bat, you can see that the grade they're giving the Patriots is going to be a B plus. Straight off the bat, too, I do want to say that there were not many teams in the NFL in general. There were only a couple of teams that reached, you know, an A minus to an A to an A plus. There was only one team in the AFC that scored higher than the Patriots. Now, there were a couple teams that did get a B plus in the AFC, but there was only one team that scored better than a B-plus in the AFC, and that was the Houston Texans, who obviously just had a monstrous offseason. But you look at some of the moves that the Patriots made here. Released Lawrence Sky, released J.C. Jackson, released Adrian Phillips. They didn't franchise tag Kyle Duggar. They transitional tagged him, so they did get that wrong, but they did still tag him. They signed Chuck Sakura for Hunter Henry was a re-signing, re-signed Kendrick Bourne, signed Antonio Gibson, released Devontae Parker. Resigned Michael Onwenu, signed Jacoby Brissett, uh, signed linebacker Sione Taki Taki, resigned Jalen Rager, resigned Josh Uche, signed Austin Hooper, resigned Anthony Jennings, signed guard Nick Leverett, who I think is a very, very good guard uh, coming from the, the Buccaneers, and then defensive lineman Armand Watts. All moves that we already talked about on the channel, so we're not going to necessarily break those down here, but the biggest thing you see about these moves from New England is that the majority of these are re-signings, and a lot of Patriots fans have it in their minds of, well, you were a four-win team last year, and your thought process in free agency was, we're going to get better by bringing back the exact same roster, and that is something that... I just don't necessarily agree with. Yes, the Patriots were a four team win or four win team last year, but why were they a four win team? It came down to coaching. It came down to putting players in positions that they really were never going to succeed in. It came down to injuries. It came down to the fact that the Patriots had arguably the hardest schedule in the entire National Football League. The guys that the Patriots brought back are guys that were the bright spots to last year's team. Guys that you can actually build with going forward. In fact, even look at it like this. You know, Kyle Duggar is a top 10 safety, especially when he's put in a position to succeed. Hunter Henry was the best tight end on the market, especially after Dalton Schultz signed a contract extension before free agency began with the Houston Texans. Kendrick Bourne became the best wide receiver, well, second best wide receiver on the market after guys like Mike Evans, T. Higgins, and Michael Pittman were all franchise tagged and then signed to extension. So the Patriots did still get arguably, you know, one of the top wide receivers that were available on the market. Michael Onwenu was arguably the best offensive lineman on the market. They're able to bring him back. So I think you look at these signings by the Patriots. Yes, the majority of them are re-signings, but that should just go to say, what the free agency market was like this offseason, but also the guys that the Patriots had as pending free agents, just how important it was to bring those guys back. 
Real quick too, I do want to give a massive shout out to the sponsors of this video today over, over at Aura. There's going to be a link in the description box and pin in the comment section below where you guys get a 14 day, that is a free two week trial over with Aura. And what Aura is, is an identity protection service, making sure that you and your family, you are all protected from the crises that we all face on a day-to-day -day basis online. A lot of the issues that we do face, some of the scariest things in the world, they don't come from walking down the street in the morning. They come from being online and you, your children, your family, we are all online. Aura is going to come in and basically make sure that you are protected. They're going to make sure that your information is not on the web without your information. More specifically, make sure it's not on the dark web. They will scour the internet and make sure that your phone number, your address, your name, your social security number, your credit card information, none of that is on the web without your information. Did you know that those numbers that randomly call you, those robocallers, the only reason they're calling you is because there is a leak with your phone number out there on the internet? What Aura will do is that they'll scour the internet and remove all of that information for you. And again, right now, you guys can get a 14-day free trial, and it massively, massively supports the channel. So go ahead, check out Aura. What do you have to lose? It's a free 14-day trial. If you don't like it, you can always opt out. But again, make sure that you and your family are protected. I feel like if you look at the Patriots free agency also, not only did they re-sign their key players, get some guys back who are top at their positions in free agency, but the guys they released are the guys that respectfully deserve to be released. They were the biggest casualties to this team, whether it was bad play or just because they were getting older and declining. Lawrence Guy, J.C. Jackson, Adrian Phillips, um, Devontae Parker, all of these guys were the weak spots on the team this past season that got quality playing time under Bill Belichick. Now, guys who deserve to be in those starting roles and these younger guys who need to, need to develop will be thrusted into starting positions where they'll be able to shine. Now, this is what PFF had to say in terms of their overall grading of a B-plus for the Patriots. They said, the Patriots have constantly moved on when it were around the offensive line, appeared to have drafted a few potential replacements in recent years, and waited until the guard market exploded over the past week before seemingly giving in on all of Onwenu's wishes. Onwenu gets nearly $20 million annually, but also gives up only three years of his services. The Michigan graduate negotiated his own deal before firing his agent agent a week before free agency, and he did remarkably well for himself at the end. I actually think, too, that the Onwenu deal wasn't just good for Onwenu, but was also pretty decent for the Patriots. It respects Onwenu, but he's not being paid as a top five guy at tackle or guard, which... Again, not necessarily knowing what the future plan is. We know they're going to play him at tackle this season, but not knowing the overall future plan for Onwenu, you can't argue with, with, with the money that he's getting. They said that the Patriots have a ton of cash to burn and need a better situation around their next franchise quarterback. And Henry has been a characterized or characterized as a leader on the offense. That said, this is a strong deal for a tight end who will turn 30 years old in 2024. Now, this is true, but Hunter Henry's not being paid as a top 10 tight end. Statistically, you don't have to do too much to be in that category of a top 10 tight end. And Hunter Henry has been a guy who has produced for the Patriots over the last three years, whether it's been different quarterbacks, whether it's been uh, a different offensive coordinator and every single year that he's been here, he has still produced. How can he produce in a system that utilizes its tight ends, has some consistency and has a better quarterback. And again, all while not paying him as a top 10 tight end. They also said that Kendrick Bourne is recovering from a torn ACL and is reportedly, uh, on track to suit up in week one. He was in the midst of his best season when he went down. New England at least has a few reliable pass catchers in the fold, but they still need to go uh, big game hunting, which ultimately I do agree on. It shouldn't be the end all be all for the Patriots, but between the re-signings, between the additions that they made with Sione Taki Taki, who I think could come in, serve as that Mac Wilson role, and potentially do better because I think he fits, fits the Patriots' defensive system a little bit better. Uh, Nick Leverett, I think, could be a starting guard for the Patriots, if need be, a very good backup at least, though. And then Armand Watts being a pass rush specialist within the interior who also isn't that bad at stopping the run also. I think he's going to be more of a rotational guy that is going to be a very, very underrated signing.
And that brings us to, well, okay, what did the rest of the AFC East get in terms of grades? So Buffalo, Buffalo only got a, a B minus. So they didn't like Buffalo's free agency as much as they liked New England's. You then look at Miami. Miami had a pretty good offseason. I would say they lost a lot of key players, but they brought in a lot of really good guys too. They got the same grade as the Patriots with a B plus. And then the Jets, they also got worse than the Patriots. They got an overall B grade and they made a couple of, of really good additions also. So that should speak volumes to just how high or how decent rather PFF views the Patriots free agents. Now, in terms of my thoughts, I'm 100% with you Patriots fans, okay? I was screaming at Gerard Mayo. I was screaming at Elliot Wolf. I was saying, what in God's name are we doing? But at the end of the day, I think we wanted a big free agency to be back into contention by next year. And realistically, that was never going to happen. That was never going to be the plan. Do you want the Patriots to go all in this offseason to try to be competitive for next year but hurt themselves down the line? or to slowly rebuild themselves back up in a two, three-year rebuild, but be good for the future. I think that's the thought process here with Elliot Wolf, is that free agency isn't what should build your team in terms of longevity, is that that should be the draft, but that free agency is to re-sign your guys and add complementary pieces, especially when you're in contention. I think that maybe next year, maybe next year's free agency in 2025, maybe 2026 is when we'll see the Patriots go more all out in free agency when they're back into contention, when you can add one, two, maybe three big pieces, and that will have such a drastic impact to where you go in the postseason versus where the Patriots are at right now. And there are so many pieces off where you could go ahead and sign a uh, uh, Daniil Hunter to a massive $20, $25 million contract. But is that going to move the needle for you in terms of success? Probably not. I definitely don't agree with everything that the Patriots have done this offseason. I mean, I think that there's a lot of really good players in free agency that they can still get and that they could have gotten that were still young and could have been a part of this next generation here in New England. But you have to understand what the Patriots are trying to do in terms of longevity and once you do that, the offseason free agency, it does make a lot more sense. So what are your guys' thoughts on PFS saying that the Patriots had a B-plus free agency? You know, rather where a lot of you Patriots fans and, and me at times were even trying to say that this was like a, a C to, to a D. And some people even going as far as to say that this was an F for the Patriots in free agency. Let me know in the comments section below. Remember to leave a big like on this video. And of course, subscribe to the channel for all of your New England Patriots news. I appreciate you guys so, so, so much for watching. Most importantly, though, never forget, go back.